Well, hello, good afternoon. It's Chevy Colorado Chronicles with Paul. It is the uh, 10th day of November 2019. Yeah, what time is it? It's about uh, five minutes to three in the afternoon. A beautiful sunny day. It's about six or eight degrees Celsius, which isn't too bad. We're going to take a look at a Chevy Colorado 2018. As you see here, put some on the front of the, uh, the bug deflector. It is a four door. I put the uh, tonneau color cover. I put some uh, steps on the side. But it is a V6 Colorado, eight speed automatic. And it has a tow package on it as well. You can see. This is for the. Uh, this is for the plug-in. This one is for your. Uh, you go in there with a. With a nice uh, long handle that's inside the uh, base of the truck, uh, the back seat, I should say. You go in and you roll your. You can see it under there. You roll that tire down so you can get at it. It's a full spare tire. As you can see, all tires around are uh, Goodyear tires. And they are 265-60-18s. These are all season tires. And I was talking with the, uh, the dealer when I bought the truck. He said, these will probably get me through the winter, considering I've got a four-wheel drive transmission. So they're all around. So I'm going to give you a little bit of uh, my my take on it and uh, the little features that I like about it. I like that little little step in the back bumper. We're going to actually step up and get in to the back of the truck. I did order for in here. Uh, I don't have anything to tow. Of course, I just put things in the back of the box. But if I wanted to tow something, of course, I need a a, a hitch. But I ordered a little step that you can put here which will be nice to get in the back if I have more than one thing in there but I uh, may get a I may get a hitch but I have uh, I have to of course when you get a hitch you're gonna have to it, it may not come right straight out this way it might go down a little bit and over so I have to get that distance and then come out and get the proper ball over here so that'll be another purchase but I like the way that the tailgate sort of slowly comes down, doesn't slam down. Sorry for the wind, if you hear it wind. A little bit of leaf, a few leaves in there. It's got a fully liner, it's got a full liner, and the tonneau uh, folds back in three sections. Back from the, up from the back. Oh, you might have noticed inside there that there are holes right here. Where you, you take the rope over to the, to the hooks that are in each one. But underneath the seat, I'll show you. I've got four holes, and I've got four caps so that you screw into the, the holes. It's a nice push, and uh, look at that. No cap to worry about. Just give it a push. A few of my things are. I got my boots and my hat, and unfortunately, a snow brush and those sorts of things. But winter's coming. But it's got nice big back seats here, and as I mentioned, uh, it's underneath this back seat. If I can open it for you, if I can hold it up there. I'm gonna have four hands and a back over here. Hang on for a second. I'll put you down. Sorry about that. So you can put that seat up like that. And there's a little bit of a compartment under here to store a few things. And I've got a, a windshield cover that keeps the frost off, makes it easy. And there's those four caps I was talking about that pop into the back. And this is the the post or the uh, the crankshaft that you put into the back and lower down that spare tire. And you just have to. It's a little latch right here, up and down. That lifts it, 
and then you lift it again and it, it falls down. You can also bring this seat forward. It gives it more storage here if you want to. And a click back. But I like the fact that the truck box is separate from the truck cab, which means there's no noise. You don't hear you don't hear the wind and stuff like that. I remember having a Dodge truck many years ago. The Dodge truck was something else. Mirrors, so the usual mirrors. You can see me in there. Hi, how you doing? Uh, this little mirror here is great for that blind spot. And it's got the uh, the vinyl butt flaps. They're quite nice. I had this all shined up not long ago. I've seen a picture of it. The other side in the back, and you can do that. You can see it's a 60-40 split in the back seat. Small, large. Likewise, you can bring this back seat down. You can put something here if you want. It'll flatten out. You can, you can take these out and this will come back and flatten, flatten here. Three seat belts, three in the back, two in the front. Lots of places. Cup holder, a little cutty cuppy hole here speaker back here. Got a great radio system on it. This is the passenger side looking in. Likewise, there's cup holders, cuppy holes. I don't know what you'd want to put in all these things, but they're here if you need them. Glove box. And it's, this one has uh, the cloth seats. Very comfortable though. High back. Very, very comfortable to sit in. I've got the dash cam on there. That works nice. So, let's go in. Oh, I'll show you this first. Let me uh, open the hood for you. I like the hood too. None of this brace stuff going on. So you come around. All you have to do is you have to find, of course, you have to find that little latch in case you ever, ever leave it open. See if I can find it with one hand. Of course the wrong hand I'm using. There it is right there. You just have to lift that up and it stays. Don't you just love that? It is a V6 a VVT direct injection engine. Like I say it's a it's a six cylinder eight speed automatic and it's nice and clean. This is 2018. It has almost 25,000 kilometers on it, which is nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. So you can see it's all kept clean. I take it due to the dealer. The dealer takes really good care of it for me. Oh, that's the outside. Let's go in, take a look. There's my view. Is that great? So you can see the mirror is, uh, it's got the height. It's got the, uh, what's that called? On star or on? something on star. Uh, you can press this for SOS if you're in trouble and of course get some help if you have to. Um, there's my dash cam. That's my holder for my cell phone. Now in this truck we've got the uh, on the left hand side with the drivers you've got the the windshield uh, for the side window I should say down for the driver side passenger side back drivers back passenger and this is for uh, the child locks and windows so you can, no, you can lock them up uh, so they can't open the back windows or open the back doors really helps although I have no children to worry about mirror adjustment over here you just press it on the left hand side left right back down and you can just see it moving there So they work before you even start the truck. Let's 
stick it out a little bit. Oh, you get a lot of sun. Oh yeah. So let's put the key in it. It's got a regular fob with a key. Just a matter of placing it in the ignition. And you watch the dash set up, systems uh, checked. It did very well back in 19. Did very well indeed. Turn the radio down. Yeah, we'll start it. It's a beautiful power steering in it. So this is showing you, if I can zoom in a little bit for you, showing you the uh, tachometer fuel gauge on the left up top there and of course the temperature for the coolant and there's a speedometer in kilometers it also has a bit of a menu item here that you can start from the top and you do that here there's a little on the signal light there's a little menu button and the menu changes this at the top you see it so I could see my average uh, fuel economy there, my oil life, and then you can scroll down if there's anything else there, but just strictly that on that one. We go back to the first menu, you have the trip odometer, one, uh, the fuel range, the average uh, vehicle speed, I think you can see that okay, a timer, Navigation, that's if I were to use the OnStar navigation. And I'm not sure what that is, but it's blank. And then my speed in uh, digital, if I want to watch it. And you press menu again, come over to the second one, you have oil life, your oil pressure, your tire pressure on all four tires, left, front, right, front, left, rear, right, rear. And it looks like my right rear is down a little, and my right front is down a little. Then again, it's sitting in the cold. I had the sun on the left-hand side of the car, so that'll change things. I've got 15 volts of battery, which is good, and I've got engine hours of only 442 hours. Very young engine. And that's the transmission fluid. It's only 9 degrees at the moment. And I can change it from metric to uh, what's the menu button here. Oh, sorry about that. Metric to whatever I wanted by, by hitting the, the end of my signal switch right here. That's the OK button. You can hear the fans going for the defrost, which I've got on. Come over to the lower panel down here. Zoom out a little bit, try not to get too much sun on there. There we are. You can see here, this is my fan. This is for AC. This is for circulate inside the vehicle or let it come through. This is for straight at me through these vents. This is for defrost up front and from here. And this shows strictly my feet and it shows a change on this screen here. When I change these, it's showing me what I've changed it to, it's going through just based on those settings there. And of course the temperature. You turn it down here, of course your air conditioning kicks in. And up here will give you heat. Although you do have an AC button here to turn on. But if you're going to put this down, you're going to have cool air coming in the car. The panel is showing you audio, gallery, phone, projection, settings, on star and camera. So if I press the audio, it's going to show me my radio with my channels down here. And you move over to find more channels. I can go to the menu here. That allows me to get my station list to show, my tone settings, my auto volume, my categories. And I can update RDS. Not sure what that is. I think it's uh, some kind of a signal that I can turn on and off. It's showing that it's on right now. Go back one. And you 
press home down here. Takes me back. I can go to gallery. Of course, it's going to try to find uh, an iPhone or something like that. I don't have an iPhone with me, so it can't. If I go to phone, of course, it's going to go to phone, look for a phone. It's trying to find my iPhone. Uh, it thinks it's connected, but it probably is. My phone is in the house, so more than likely it's connected based on this 4G LTE and uh, my wireless uh, symbol right there. So it's probably connected with Bluetooth and Wi Fi. So I'm all set. It shows the temperature there, too. It's 9 degrees outside. It's uh, 9 minutes after 3 in the afternoon. So go back home. Then I can look at projection again. It's going to look for uh, connect a supported device via USB. You can go to settings here, and this is where you can set your date, your time. I have a little reminder set on for the rear seat. It lets me know that some, maybe there's a child, a dog. Uh, I left some butter back there, but I put it in earlier in the day. So that'll go beep, beep, beep to my, remind me to turn around and take a look in the back seat. It's got the language, which will be English, of course, teen driver. You have settings for that. You have settings for the radio, for the vehicle, the Bluetooth. Uh, Apple uh, CarPlay is really handy because uh, I can plug my phone in and kaboom, I've got my maps and everything else. And uh, Android Auto, I don't have the automatic of an iPhone. And the Wi-Fi settings for the, you can actually set up a Wi-Fi in the in the truck. And, uh, and it's the Wi-Fi network inside the truck. And I can have a USB auto launch, as soon as I plug something in, kaboom, it takes off. I can turn uh, the display off or on. It's on, obviously. I've got the rear camera. That rear camera is pretty fantastic when it comes to how you set up your lines and the rear park assist symbols. It helps me with my rear camera uh, when I do put it in reverse. I'll show you that in a few minutes. Then you can go to s factory settings or get some software information. And that's going to show you uh, the open source of software updates, which it'll, it's checking for updates now. Look at that. So it's going out and trying to find an update. If it finds it, it'll take care of it. And I have the latest. So I'll press home again. I'll unstart. I'm not going to touch that. I don't have a, a an account with them yet. Anyway, I'd like to get one actually. And there's my camera. I can turn the camera on, and that's showing me behind the vehicle. And I can press two. This is if I were looking at the trailer hitch for a straight line. And this one is sort of giving my grid. So if I'm going backwards with the trailer, I can keep it straight. So the straight line. If I want to go right back to the hitch with where the where the ball is, right here. I can go back to it, the front of the trailer or whatever, and you exit the system. Back home. Oh, oh, again, that's camera. So that's the uh, control on the screen. Down here, you've got the emergency flashers, which work up here in the cluster. And you turn it off and on by just pressing on the button. This is for my traction control. I can turn it on or off. You can see right that yellow one right there. It's off. I should say it's on. It's off. It's on. You have to wait a little bit. This is the light in the back. that lights up just above my head behind me. Uh, it lights up the back of the truck. You turn it on. You turn it off. Mind you, when you put it in reverse or park the truck, it also comes on. And this is showing, uh, if I'm towing something, I can put the... Uh, Set that up for trailer. And it shows a little trailer right under there. That's going to help me um, drive appropriately. Now over here, if you can see it, the left hand side of the steering wheel right by my knee, this is for the four wheel drive control. It's currently on two or two speed up. And so the rear drive, so away I go, I just push the truck along. If all of a sudden I'm into a situation where I'm going to need four-wheel drive, I can do it on the fly. and go to four, up, and you wait a little while, and it's, uh, watch what happens. Four-wheel drive, and it's, it adjusts the, what's this, four-wheel shift in progress. It shifts it, boom, I'm ready to go. And then that's up the upper four. I can actually shift that at about uh, 50 miles an hour or uh, or something like 80 kilometers. And if I go to four low, I mean that's jumbo low. I'll probably never use that. But that's four wheel drive low shift to neutral. And I'm talking really guttural 
uh, torque. I mean, I can I can push myself through two feet of snow, no doubt, and it'll stay there. I think it goes off automatically. So it's waiting to turn it on, and I have to put it in neutral to make it happen. And what that does, that allows me on the stick shift here to come all the way back to low, and then it allows me to shift using the minus and plus. So I can start in 6 or 8 and work my way down and then bring it up as I get into the better better traction with all the snow around me. And that's the other thing, that is the 6 shift in the gear selector. Park, reverse, neutral, drive, and low. And you get to low by putting that in four wheel low. I'm going to put it back to my regular two-wheel drive. Boom. And I always like to leave my my uh, display on fuel economy. And it's averaging about nine liters per 100 kilometers, which is really good. Now, I was driving a Toyota Sienna van, and it's getting 13 to 14, or making or burning up 14 liters per 100 kilometers. So this truck is doing a whole lot better than that four cylinder. This is a six cylinder, that's a four cylinder van. It's doing a whole lot better. So it gives you an idea, the inside of the truck. Right up above me is my microphone for uh, for the cell phone. It's got good mirror. Hello again. <laughs> This is showing me that my seat belt is set. It's not on for the passenger until somebody sits there. And this is controlling my lights. They're on or off, I should say. That's off. You can see this strike through it. That's when you open the door, and that's on all the time. You can see it come on there. It has one back there, too. So looking in the back seat, See handle to grab, grab handles, seat belts, a beautiful rear windshield, and you see the tonneau cover back behind you. It's got a center console, which you can actually, I bought this on Amazon. It's a nice little tray that you can use, and down in there, now they haven't used this. Uh, this is an empty slot where you can have USB or a, a 12 volt, I suppose, but that's not in there. And it's just a place, a nice deep, it goes down there quite a ways. I've got a GPS down there. So, let's, let's walk, look at some features here. If I put that in reverse, it's an automatic camera for me there. And it's showing me uh, a particular grid pattern so I know when I turn the wheel, see how that turns with the wheel? Oops, sorry about that. It turns with the wheel, so if I were to go back, it's going to take me that way, and I'll know when I go to the ditch. So I can get down and get a better view. I can also change that setting here again to that straight line. Same idea as on the on on this panel here, except this is with the reverse. So this will stay on, where the other one won't stay on. This will stay on. You can see the bumper. You can see the bumper of the car there, or the truck. So you can go back and know exactly where the back bumper is. Exactly. You won't hit a thing. And that's showing the hill that I would back up at the moment. Park takes it off. Of course, when you put it in drive, nothing really happens. But it does show you here um, that D right there on the right. It's showing me that I'm in drive. And the direction on the left-hand side, I'm going southeast in my kilometers, 25,379. So that's a little look at the Chevy Colorado. Gives you a really good idea how the, the front of the, the truck is. And before my battery totally dies, I want to thank you for joining me. Subscribe. Like, comment, and until next time, see ya.